We found a Kavari in the wild. Uh, it's the new AMD A10 7850K. Here's the full specs. Uh, it's of course you know it's the Radeon R7 graphics. That's but that's on the CPU. Uh, it's an APU. 8 gigs of DDR3, 120 gigabyte SSD, and uh, they're actually running this on three monitors at 3600 by 1920. It was a Civilization 5 right now. So I'm going to scroll around the map just a little bit. Um, they just told me that this is running at uh, 2133. That's the RAM speed, and RAM speed is important when you're using an APU. Uh, it's not really important if you have uh, uh, you know a graphics card with dedicated video memory because that's going to be um, you know what's what's doing your frame buffer and all that wonderful texture moving around stuff just to see exactly what we're doing here. Uh, of course, 3600 by 1900 and uh, 2x MSAA. And then moving over, we've got the leader scene quality medium. And you guys can see right here the detail. The, what's off is the shadows. Uh, the, the shadow quality is off and the terrain qual uh, shadow quality is off. Water is set to low. Uh, but everything else is on uh, you know medium and high except for the fog of war. But texture quality is on high though. So they are moving some nice large textures. We're looking at two laptops featuring the AMD R9 290X, actually the M290X is the mobile version. Um, and the, the regular version can, you know, it can deal with about 300 watts. This one, it, you know, they had to really pr program it so that it could use 100 watts instead. So that means that it's, it's gonna be a little bit slower than a 290X. However, it's still gonna be one of the fastest mobile uh, single GPUs out there. One MSI 17 inch laptop featuring the uh, M290X. And we also have one of the Alienwares from Dell featuring the uh, M290X. It's running pretty good. We're here with Jerry at AMD, and uh, you guys are doing some interesting things with face recognition technology. Uh, Jerry, tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing. Okay, we're partnering with uh, Orbius, who's giving us uh, some really good face recognition APIs. Uh, we're leaders in media, and uh, we believe that they're leaders in face recognition because their APIs are extremely easy to develop to. I know that you have a lot of uh, developers in your audience. Uh, we find that that's really a pleasure to develop. We've got some uh, applications of that that we'd like to show you. And uh, keep in mind that uh, they really took only about two months to develop each and uh, with this amount of power. So you just use their APIs and it just really just quickly things have started to happen. So go ahead and show us uh, some of the things you're doing with them. Okay, uh, we have uh, over here, um, this is one of the videos uh, that's on YouTube, uh, Doritos commercial um, that has to do with the Xbox. And um, it crawls through the video and uh, locates all the different uh, faces that are there. Um, it's great for video editing, uh, also uh, for entertainment, it is an added value. Uh, we look at, uh, for each face that we choose, um, it, it pinpoints the locations of that face, so you can click to um, be able to see, uh, queue up uh, the different locations where they're at. Clicking on the thumbnail can also bring you to uh, where you're at. Um, this is really useful for anybody who's been trying to do uh, edit videos, uh, but also if there was a, a video stream that came out uh, from a provider, um, maybe a content provider, uh, if it had the metadata, it would uh, have an enhanced uh, viewing pleasure. You'd be able to see more of the scenes that you like, uh, be able to find the videos that you like, um, and it's all brought um, just by automatic uh, face recognition. So let's put that a little bit more into layman's terms. You tell me that if I'm watching like my favorite television show and I have a favorite actor, I'll be able to just like find his face and go to other scenes that he's in just by clicking. That's right. You know, um, for instance, like if you had. Uh, a show that you really like, like Friends, and you know there's uh, several different characters in that. Uh, what it would do is it index them just like a book. You'd have an index and a table of contents, but for your videos, um, just make it uh, so you can rewatch the videos that you're, you're seeing, or if there's some favorite scenes that you wanted to see a second time, you know it's really easy to find them. For anybody that's uh, editing videos or you know uh, being able to uh, look in security video for some, something that they're looking for. I mean, we think that Orbius is a good way to go with that. So uh, Orbius lends itself really well to fully custom uh, solutions as well. Now, um, have you been able to extend this beyond facial recognition? I was talking to, um, I was, I was you know, talking to everybody else and they were saying that it could possibly be used to identify certain products. If someone was you know, curious about, hey, uh, that, that guy there, I like those shoes or I like that car. Uh, is it, are you guys working on that as well? 
Yes, um, that's one of the reasons why we're really excited about working with Orbius is because the facial recognition that we're doing is only a small portion of the APIs that they cover. The, for the marketing that you're talking about, you know, you could uh, look at a person's face and a see see whether they're happy with the, what they're seeing. So you know, add feedback. You can uh, find out if they're happy. You can find out uh, their sex. You can find out if they're um, uh, their approximate age. Um, you can follow them and see if they go into, you know, if it's a shopping mall, you can see if they go into the, the, the store. Um, you, can, you can do that. Uh, you can detect uh, objects as well. So, you know, we can see what type of shoes they're wearing. So Marketing kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. like, it's like almost scary. A lot of the information is not retained by Orbius. They discard the, the original photos. So, you know, they save the metrics, but, you know, and since they're not named, you know, we find that it's uh, they're hitting on all cylinders with that as well. Is that we feel it's not um, the creepy kind of uh, face recognition. So, are you one of the head developers on this, or? Um... Yes, I'm part of the research group. Um, we are looking at the, a lot of the Blue Sky applications uh, that AMD would like our, to present to our customers to just uh, expand the limits of what uh, what can be done. Right now, uh, the servers that. Uh, uh, Orbius is using is running on an, uh, an AMD blade. We're happy about that. Um, we uh, want to give uh, offerings, you know, so that we can show the limits of some of these uh, new technologies that uh, that we're bringing out uh, with the um, the uh, the Kaveri chip that we announced the availability of. So on one of these is the uh, HSA, which allows you to uh, use the GPU and CPU for a lot of the media tasks. So you effectively, you know, unleash your uh, GPU cores for um, your the, the tasks that would normally be uh, on the CPU only. You save 50% of the time. So um, it, and it's incorporated as a WIC, uh, so that uh, any time that you're doing it in Windows, uh, it would actually be using and taking advantage of that speed enhancement. Trying out the true audio from AMD, and this is part of the uh, Kavari. I gotta learn to look around. But this is um, a bit different. It's not like 5.1 channel surround. There are two speakers. Um, going that way. How do I turn? Oh, okay, I turn that way. I'm not used to these Xbox controllers either, but. So I'm gonna walk over here. Oh, this looks really pretty. Uh, this is presented by Gen Audio. And uh, the, like I said, the interesting thing about this is that. Whoa, it's just starting to feel weird. Wow, I can really, really hear that stuff over there. It's not 5.1. It's almost like a binaural experience because it's taking, uh, you know, precise hardware calculations of where the sound is originating in the game and feeding it to these two speakers. Because, I mean, well, this is starting to get disorienting. I mean, it's like a bit too real. This is weird. So like I said, it's, it's just feeding uh, you know, everything to two channels. You've got two ears, you've got two channels, everything's good to go. That sounds pretty good. We're also using the HT prototype of the uh, Oculus as well to get the full experience. It looks pretty good. This audio is pretty awesome. Um, there's, a, there's a violin playing and it's coming from nowhere. So I found it, it's actually like reverberating off of the roof of this building. It's coming out of nowhere.